to this new video. In this video, we're going to continue our Game Engine ROS2 series. In this case, we're going to continue with Godot because we created an update to be able to use Godot 4. If you don't know, Godot 4 is being released in beta, beta right now. So it's really, really fresh. It's not released 100%, but it's freeze the features at least. So it's a very good opportunity to start developing modules and apps and games for it. And for us ROS developers, it's a fantastic tool to have very good visuals and maybe have a different approach an alternative to gazebo or webot or other simulation environments. So let me teach you more or less the steps I followed on how to do this. I'll just show you. Uh, so let's go. First thing is that you have to go to the Godot engine Git and download it. So you can you have to download the latest version, the master basically is four. Godot 4 and you just have to go here and hit copy and then clone it. I have it already installed and prepared for you but just to show you here I would say create a folder and inside it create put all your files the projects and Godot source itself. You can have a look here that we basically did git clone and then this, um, this git and we clone it. And this is this folder that we have just here. Once you have it, you just have to follow the instructions to compile it. These are the instructions for Ubuntu, but I think you can do it for um, Windows and I'm not sure for Mac OS, I think so. And here I follow these Debian Ubuntu dependencies so just install this execute this command if you have a an nvidia vulcan cable gpu it's more than enough which is quite common now nowadays once we have it then we have to execute the compilation command and i i really liked this command which is scones uh, and then it sets the number of cores that will be compiling because if you have a very beefy computer it will compile much faster in this case my my setup i think it's 12 yeah but if you have a very beefy computer maybe you have even more but with this number of cores it will go reg relatively fast yeah then once you compile it you're ready to go to use Godot 4 actually. There's no much else to do. But the thing is, how do we set up Godot in a way that we can use ROS2, the latest version of ROS? In this case, in my system, I'm using Galactic. It's not the latest latest, but just because I, I didn't want to install uh, Ubuntu 22, which is a bit unstable yet, and it has some things that it might not be a very good idea to work with ROS2. So how do we do this? We do the following. Uh, we have to go and download the latest Godot ROS in from now, the, the time I'm doing this video, it's not pulled to the main branch and main Git, which was created by Flyneva. Uh, I created a a fork of it and you can download it. I leave all the, the links in the video description and you can download this Godot 4 branch. Just clone it and put it around here, for example, in your folder. In this case, I put it here in Godot 4 modules. If you go here, Godot 4 modules. And here you can see that I have Godot ROS which is the, the module of Godot. Godot works with modules like plugins, which allows it to be very modular and you can 
adapt libraries. Even the GD script, which is the language used for scripts in Godot, is a module. So imagine how flexible it is. So um, I just want to show you which are the modifications that you might have to do for your own modules if you want to do a transition to ROS um, to Godot 4. If you have a look here, I have my Visual Studio opened and in the modules, we had to do some tiny modifications, which were CPP, the register types, which is the file that registers all the, the classes that you are going to be, are going to make available for the GD scripts, the scripts inside the Godot engine to be accessible. In this case, we had this talker viewport. We, I just did, uh, tested viewport, but I'll try to test uh, the other classes and fix whatever we need to fix. But viewport is a very important feature because as you have seen, it allows you to see what you can see in game and access that image data and use it for deep learning and so on. So once we have this, we, we just had to modify this include and then modify the names that we use here for this initialize module. In this case is initialize Godot Ross module. There was slight differences in, in the text basically. That's not the difficult part. The difficult part was adapting the code of um, GDescript so that it worked again. Here, the other ones, I haven't updated them to Godot 4, but the viewport publisher, essentially it's much simpler, but we're using a node 3D. So for that, I'd like you to, sh to show this code. I'll show you this code inside Godot. So let's launch it. So for that, if you compiled and your compilation went okay, you should have it in the Godot. To have it compiled and have this module inside, you'll have to follow these instructions, which are super basic. The only thing is that you have to launch the IDE, the Godot, always sourcing your galactic or your uh, humble your ROS version basically and once done then you have to compile with this command plus the path where you have the module the Godot ROS module and that's it if everything all w went well which it should because it's not very difficult to to have it all set up if you have ROS to install and you have the dependencies for uh, Godot 4 which you should if it compiled before that's it once you have it, then you're able to go to Godot binary and then let's source opt ros galactic setup dot bash. This you have to do it each time you open a new terminal and you execute this. Godot. There we go. Spawns a base. This is my project while it loads. All the project is inside here and the other project that we've talked about in previous videos. Some of the um, assets used here in sponsor base are not available here for just a very simple reason. They are super huge. For that, you'll just have to download it from this page, which is the sponsor base scene. I've used this one and also I've used this colorful curtains, curtains um, add-on, let's say. But you have many, many, many. And if we, you are interested, we might do um, an animated night that we move using ROS2. That would be fantastic. Uh, but basically you have to download this and then put it like this in your project. So if you download this Godot bot and sponsor base, you can see that here I have two folders. One that has main sponsor, 
which has this main sponsor, which is the folder of the basic sponsor asset. And then I have this PKA curtains. And that's basically it. Everything else will be set for that. So you'll have to download that. Once we have this, we should have this um, project I'm going to hit. I set up a bit the lighting. I created a, a player, which you have already here created, so you can move it around. And let's have a look. Inside the player, I've added two things. This timer, which is the one that now controls the, the rate at which we publish images. If you go to node, you'll see that my timer, the timeout um, callback, let's say, signal, sorry, I've activated so that it's connected to my, this node, which is, uh, if you have a look here, it's a uh, node 3D, which is the equivalent of Godot 4 to the, um, and the spatial node in Godot 3. You don't have spatial anymore, you have this. Okay, it's, more, it's the same, basically. Inside here, we created a, a script, which is the exact example that you have in the folder of the modules. So this guy here, a viewport publisher. Um, so let me, oh, I got lost here. Okay. Once we have this, which essentially adds this signal timeout and this function, this callback is called each time that we have this timer, which is every 0 0.05 seconds, which is really, really fast or relatively fast. And it auto starts, it's activated the auto start, and then it calls every time this. And what it does is basically this is new. So now there in Godot 4, it doesn't exist the yield. So we use a wait render server. This is to avoid empty rendering, especially in the first frame. Then what we do is access the image. Again, this was changed because there are some methods that were no longer there, this kind of stuff. And then this is exactly the same. Then we publish in the viewport, which essentially is this viewport node. And then we count just to know how many frames. And that's it. that's it. That's it. So let's go to the main. And then let's let's launch it. Okay. So you can move with. Uh, uh, w S A D and jump with space and move with the mouse. You just have to click on the screen. If you want to get out, just ask, click, uh, press the ask button in the keyboard and you can go and close whatever. Let's open a new terminal. Let's source our OPT ROS galactic setup dot bash and ROS to run rqt gui uh sorry rqt image view image view rqt image view there you go and there we have it let's put it always on top and put this there we go and let's move around as you can see it's super responsive absolutely massive improvement versus um, the first one. So Godot 3 was, the frame rate was really, really, really bad, but this one's amazingly fast. And this opens a vast place of possibilities because now you could use this same image to do deep learning to do perception for any kind of perception. 
Um, if you don't know how to do this in ROS and you didn't understand what I'm doing here, I highly recommend that you follow our these two courses, which are ROS to basics in five days. You learn all the basics of ROS, how to deal with these kind of images, these kind of images. You learn how to deal with them and how to process them, at least the basics. And then will be you have this course, which is ROS2 Manipulations Basics, which teaches you how to do manipulation and perception. So much more focus in ROS2. So check them out if you want to know how to use this great tool for your own ROS2 project and robotics or deep learning or whatever you want. And that's essentially it, what we have. So what's next? The next steps would be to add lasers, right? That we did in the previous videos, add movement, add access to game engine functionality through ROS2, whatever you want. So please leave in the comments what you're interested in. And as always, subscribe if you haven't, please subscribe and give a like if you like this videos because it helps a lot to know so that we know what you like and what you don't and make these this kind of content and that's quite it thanks and see you in the next video peace